Chapter 2 of Concise Commentary on the Book of Matthew by Matthew Henry. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Samantha Gubitz. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Those who live at the great distance from the means of grace often use most diligence and learn to know the most of Christ and his salvation. But no curious arts or mere human learning can direct men unto him. We must learn of Christ by attending to the word of God, as a light that shineth in a dark place, and by seeking the teaching of the Holy Spirit, and those in whose hearts the day star is risen, to give them any things of the knowledge of Christ, to make it their business to worship him. Though Herod was very old, and never had shown affection for his family, and was not himself likely to live till a newborn infant had grown up to manhood, he began to be troubled with the dread of arrival. He understood not the spiritual nature of the Messiah's kingdom. Let us beware of a dead faith. A man may be persuaded of many truths, and yet may hate them, because they interfere with his ambition or sinful indulgences. Such a belief will make him uneasy, and the more resolved to oppose the truth and the cause of God, and he may be foolish enough to hope for success therein. Verses 9 through 12. What joy these wise men felt upon this sight of the star! None know so well as those who, after a long and melancholy night of temptation and desertion, under the power of a spirit of bondage, at length receive the spirit of adoption, witnessing with their spirits that they are the children of God. We may well think what a disappointment it was to them when they found a cottage which his palace and his own poor mother the only attendant he had. However, these wise men did not think themselves baffled, but having found the king they sought, they presented their gifts to him. The humble inquirer after Christ will not be stumbled at finding him and his disciples in obscure cottages, after having in vain sought them in palaces and populous cities. Is the soul busy seeking after Christ? Would it worship him, and does it say, Alas, I am a foolish and poor creature, and have nothing to offer? Nothing! Hast thou not a heart, though unworthy of him, dark, hard, and foul? Give it to him as it is, and be willing that he use and dispose of it as it pleases him. He will take it, and will make it better, and thou shalt never repent having given it to him. He shall frame it to his own likeness, and will give thee himself, and be thine for ever. The gifts the wise men presented were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Providence sent these as a seasonable relief to Joseph and Mary in their present poor condition. Thus our Heavenly Father, who knows what his children need, uses some as stewards to supply the wants of others, and can provide for them even from the ends of the earth. Verses 13-15 through 15. Egypt had been a house of bondage to Israel, and particularly cruel to the infants of Israel, yet it is a place of refuge to the holy child Jesus. God, when he pleases, can make the worst of places serve the best of purposes. This was a trial of the faith of Joseph and Mary, but their faith, being tried, was found firm. If we and our infants are at any time in trouble, let us remember the straits in which Christ was when an infant. Verses 16 through 18. Herod killed all the male children, not only in Bethlehem, but in all the villages of that city. Unbridled wrath, armed with an unlawful power, often carries men to absurd cruelties. It was no unrighteous thing with God to permit this, every life is forfeited to his justice as soon as it begins. The diseases and deaths of little children are proofs of original sin. But the murder of these infants was their martyrdom. <laughs> How early did persecution against Christ and his kingdom begin? Herod now thought he had baffled the Old Testament prophecies and the efforts of the wise men in finding Christ. But whatever crafty, cruel devices are in men's hearts, the counsel of the Lord shall stand." Verses 19 through 23. Egypt may serve to sojourn in or take shelter in for a while, but not to abide in. Christ was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To them he must return. Did we but look upon the world as our Egypt, the place of our bondage and banishment, and heaven only as our Canaan, our home, our rest, we should as readily arise and depart thither when we are called for it, as Joseph did out of Egypt. The family must settle in Galilee. Nazareth was a place held in bad esteem, and Christ was crucified with this accusation, Jesus the Nazarene. 
wherever providence allots the bounds of our habitation we must expect to share the reproach of christ yet we may glory in being called by his name sure that if we suffer with him we shall also be glorified with him end of chapter two recording by samantha gubitz